What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. So I want to do a video right quick to show why Wilt Chamberlain was such a great offensive player. All right, and I don't think people quite get everything about him. Um, I think sometimes, like I said before, sometimes people look at numbers and take them into account for today and not look at them in the context of when he was playing. All right. Now, we all know that Will Chamberlain led the league in scoring seven times. Okay. Starting from his rookie year. His rookie year, Will Chamberlain, I'm just going to focus on the scoring, averaged 37.6 points per game. His rookie year, 37.6 points per game. If I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> prior to Wilt Chamberlain's uh, rookie year, the highest scoring average for a player was 29.2 by Bob Pettit. So no player had even averaged 30 points per game before Wilt did it as a rookie. And by the way, I also want to make this point too about Wilt Chamberlain. Um, there was a rule back then that players had to wait four years to go pro between the time that they were uh, freshmen in college to the time that they played pro. So that's why Wilt spent one year playing with the Harlem Globetrotters because he wasn't eligible to play in the NBA in 58-59. Now had Wilt played maybe 10 years later, I think he would have been eligible. So Wilt really should have played 15 years instead of 14, but that's just another, that's something else. But this point I want to make right here. Wilt took 32 shots a game that first year. 32 shots a game. And he shot 46.1% from the floor. Now that sounds pretty low, right? But not in the era that he played. That year, the average field goal percentage was 41%. Substantially lower than today's average of 47%. And when you take into account that Wilt took 32, 33 shots a game, you have to, you know, think that some of those shots, 32 shots per game actually, you have to think that some of those shots were bad shots. I mean, taking 32 field goal attempts per game, that's a lot of shot attempts. So, considering that he was doubled and triple teamed, the 46% field goal percentage is not bad at all. It's, it's substantially above league average. The next year, he averaged 38.4 points per game, leading the league and scoring again. This time, he took 31 shots per game, so he actually took a few fewer shots his second year than his first year, but he averaged more points. And he led the league in field goal percentage at 50.9%. And as a matter of fact, he was the first player in the history of the NBA to make more than half of his shots. He did it that year. League average, field goal percentage, 41.5%. So his field goal percentage is substantially higher than the league average. So that's the first year he led the league in field goal percentage. The next year is, of course, Will Chamberlain's zenith as far as scoring. 50.4 points per game. That's the year he took almost 40 shots a game. 40. But he still managed to shoot over 50% from the floor. 50.6% from the floor. The league average was creeping up, field goal percentage, 42.6%, 42.6%, uh, 42.6%. Still substantially higher than the league average, Will Chamberlain, right? Next year, Will averages 44.8 points per game on 34.6%, uh, excuse me, 34.6 shots per game. His field goal percentage leading the league 52.8%. The league average, 44.1%. So still 
well above league average. Next year, 1963-64, Wilt led the league in scoring again, 36.9. Shot attempts down to 28.7 attempts per game. Field goal percentage, 52.4% for the season. The league average, 43.3%. So it's down some. 64-65. Wilt once again leads the league in scoring at 34.7 points per game. 28.5 28.5 shot attempts per contest. Leads the league in field goal percentage as well, 51%. 64-65, the league average, 43.3, 42.6%, excuse me. So the league average, 42.6% as far as field goal percentage, average player, will 51%. So the point I'm trying to make already is that not only was Will Chamberlain leading the league in scoring, and not only was he a volume shooter, but he was a rare volume shooter who was actually shooting at an efficient rate despite being a volume shooter. Do you know how rare that is? He was actually leading the league by far in field goal, uh, field goal attempts. Usually when you take a lot of shots, your efficiency goes down. But despite that, Wilt Chamberlain's efficiency was better than virtually any other player in the NBA. Which to me sounds like an offensively unstoppable player. And as I said before, there were still some bad shots he was taking. But despite that, he was still shooting at a very high clip. 1965-66 1965-66 is the last year Wilt led the league in scoring, 33.5 points per uh, game, and he averaged uh, 25.2 shot attempts per game. And he led the league in field percentage, 54%. That was a career high, 54%. 65-66, the league average, 43.3%. He's blowing away the league average as far as the efficiency is concerned. Now afterwards, Wilt Chamberlain changed his game. He became more of an all-around player, scorer, uh, facilitator, focusing a little bit more on defense. Uh, and it shows. His scoring average drops. His teammates, the talent around him gets better. His scoring drops to 24.1 points per game. His field goal percentage, well, let me make this point. Make this point. <clears throat> His scoring goes from 33.5 to 24.1 points per game. But look at the shot attempts from 25.2 to 14.2. And by this point, Wilt was starting to focus more on scoring in the paint, not taking as many jump shots, right? And um, as a consequence of that, his field goal percentage soars 68.3% in that era. 68.3, the league average is 66-67, 44.1%. I'm just going to go through the league. I'm just going to try to wrap this video up. 68 44.6%, 69, 44.1%, 70, 46%, 71, 44.9%, 72, 45.5%, 73, 45.6%. So usually in the mid-40s, as far as field goal percentage is concerned, uh, with the league average, and Wilt, next year's, uh, 24.3 points per game, led the league in field percentage, 59.5%. Then, then 20.5 points per game, his first year with the Lakers, led the league in field percentage again, 
1969-1970. He only played in 12 games. That's when he suffered a knee injury. He averaged 27.3 points per game because the coach had actually asked him to change his game and to try to be more of a focal, focal point of offense. And he was doing that, but then he got hurt. But he shot 56.8% that year. The next year, 70-71, 20.7 points per game, 40, 54.5%, and then 72, 14.8 points per game, 64.9% shooting. And his last year, 13.2 points per game, 72.7% from the floor. So Wilt led the league in fickle percentage nine times, nine times in his 14-year career. So this was a very efficient score, as well as a prolific score. So I don't understand why when people talk about the great scores of all times, the guy had a 50.4 points per game season, a 100-point game, 122 50-point games, um, 30.1 points per game for his career. Uh, I don't quite understand why he is slipping when it comes to all-time rankings, but especially when you consider offensive players, you think Wilt is overrated? I, I, I don't, I don't quite understand that one. I'll say that, you know, I don't quite understand that one. But anyway, tell me what you guys think.